All right, so today we're gonna to talk about Primoz Roglic and how ridiculous he has been in this welter. So we're gonna start off yesterday. I didn't make a video about it, which I probably should have done, um, but I was quite busy that day. But anyway, so we're gonna go straight into it. It's a hilly stage, it's a hard stage. None of it was easy. First climb, six watts per kilo in the wheel at 34k an hour for a 4% climb, rapid. Second climb, 6.3 for 14 minutes. Tough, whole climb was ridden about 6.2, I believe um if we get down to it yeah oh well 5.8 let's say for 22 minutes still not easy you know like it's not impossible for these lot but pretty hard this is the big one uh this is when burnout attack 6.3 watts per kilo um for set coos and big boy burnout still put time into him so very impressive and then if we look at in the valley he had a normalized power of like well on the whole descent like 233 but if you look just at the actual valley part uh, normalizer like 260 um, and you think that they didn't really bring much time back on Bernal Roglic so Bernal Roglic must have done a lot of work and Roglic especially must have done you know fair fair chunk maybe closer to 300 330 normalized maybe more for Roglic he, he is pretty strong and then they go straight after that into Lagos de Covadonga um, which is a ridiculous climb uh, he is a 6.1 watts per kilo for 32 minutes um, which is obviously absolutely crazy and I guess the important thing to remember is that like this isn't you know fresh from day one uh, this is well into the race um, so we're, we're gonna have a look now at old Amri, Amri Tapiroli um, and he has most of these climbing numbers which are always very exciting to see just because you sort of get a, a sense of how ridiculous they all are um, because you know I guess in isolation maybe it's harder to see, but um, here we go on Lagos de Covadonga. Roglic should have 26.37, which if we look at the historical times, okay, it's not absolutely obscene, but when you think how hard he went before, 1800 VAM almost, I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. That's like 6.4 watts per kilo-ish. Um, and you look at like uh, on this climb here, Setku 6.3 watts per kilo, 6.2 for Jack Haig, um, and you think Bernal and Roglic gained what? like 40 seconds 50 seconds on them so they're doing another like 0.3 6.4 maybe on that climb and then Roglic is then doing another 6.4 so he's basically doing two 20 minute te two 20, 20 minute efforts sorry at over six watts per kilo probably like 6.3 6.4 as well as working very hard in the valley to keep their gap like okay it's minus 0.1 percent but 51k an hour is pretty mental they must have been going and there were just two of them as well it's absolutely crazy how strong he is and the thing is though is that like the, the question always is okay you can do one day efforts and I know this is in a grand tour but it's not like every day is the same like there are days where it's a sprint stage where Roglic is basically like four hours active recovery but next day today also very hard stage and big potential for blowing up I thought we're gonna get two things here you get chaos or everyone's too worried everyone thinks oh went too hard yesterday not sure if I'm gonna attack anyway today Still done very hard. First climb, five and a half watts per kilo for half an hour. I mean, these boys must get so bored. Just like every climb is just so hard. Um, another one, five and a half. And I know you might be like, okay, five and a half is hard for us lot, but for the pros, surely it's not that bad. And like, it's probably not, but it's like enough to like tax them. Like, it's not like they're just like noodling. If it was like five watts per kilo, I think for sure, like it's like not too hard. But I think five and a half is like, you know, it's like a little press. It's not crazy, but it's decent, especially this far into the welter. Next climb, 5.8 watts per kilo for 18 minutes. Again, pretty tough. And then we go on to the, the last climb, which is, um, this isn't an act his actual name. It's actual name we'll find here. It's like the um, the Alto del Gamontairu. Um, uh, sorry, my Spanish pronunciation is horrendous. So do correct me. And, um, Kuz did 5.8 watts per kilo. There's rumors that Lopez, who beat him by like a decent amount, well, like maybe 30, 40 seconds, maybe did six watts per kilo because he rode more on his own. But the beginning of the climb was paced by Damiano Caruso. He was doing about 5.6 watts per kilo on the front. So I don't know, sometimes he powered it. It's a bit weird because I looked at that and then he said 5.8. But anyway, all you need to know is that going 16K an hour or 15.6K an hour for 10.8% climb, so basically like 16K an hour, 11%. Ah, uh, so that's pretty hard. <laughs> um, there's no doubt about that. And then there's sort of this flatter section here, um, just for like two minutes where they get a little bit of speed um, before they get into the final climb, which is up this really narrow, steep road um, up to the summit. 
Uh, and this again was done at six watts per kilo for 20 minutes almost, which is just crazy. And I think that's the thing is like, it's not a one day effort. It's not like, oh, they just go out, whack the stage hard they can, do it back to back. And that I think is, is what for me makes all of them so special. Like, they can do it day after day after day. And I think while like, okay, you know, other people might be able to do one day, these lot day after day. And it's not like, it's not like Roglic could do it. It's like they all had a hard day yesterday and then they all climbed extremely well today as well. So it's just like, obviously Bernal and Roglic had a harder day than other people because they spent longer on the flat. But still, like, they all had a tough day out and then they all performed today. No one really cracked. It was just pretty impressive, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it just seems like level these days is absolutely bonkers. I reckon if this had happened in like 2015 when everyone was a bit cleaner, um, <laughs> straight off the whole Lance thing, I reckon people wouldn't be doing this. There'd be cracks left, right, and center. But these days, it just seems like everyone's learned how to train properly and they just do ridiculous days, day after day after day. Interesting to see what happened with, if Pogaccio was here as well. Like, he, I reckon he would have gained even more time on Roglic yesterday and today probably would have attacked with like 20 minutes to go, put another minute or so in them. But anyway, pretty interesting. I think it's good Bernal attacked yesterday and I think next year he's gonna be back stronger than ever. He had Rono in the first week. Well, he's had Rono, that was how, had his back injuries. I think if he doesn't have a you know, any issues over winter, I think he should be on a decent level again. But the Slovenians are just a step ahead of anyone. They can bin anyone in a time trial and they barely ever lose time in the mountains. So very hard to beat them. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video. Make sure to subscribe, give the video a like. I'll see you in the next one.